Hi boys and girls, I am going to read a story to you today called Woodrow the White House Mouse. And I have a special guest with me today to read this book with me. So with honor, I would like to introduce you to President Donald Trump. Okay, so this is Woodrow the White House Mouse. Every four years, like the rest of us do, the mice of the nation elect someone too. To live in Washington's greatest old house, a leader respected, a President Mouse. Woodrow G. Washington won the last vote. A mouse Yankee Doodle, the newspapers wrote, so good and so brave and smart, if you please. His favorite food? Why, American cheese. So on a cold winter's day, with most solemn respect, two presidents swore to preserve and protect our nation, our freedoms, our flag, see it wave, our land of the free and our home of the brave. The White House was lit, floor to roof, wall to wall, for the beautiful, splendid, inaugural ball. Soon Woodrow arrived with his first lady Bess and their children in tow, about eight more or less. There were Truman and Franklin, their two oldest sons, and Quentin and Kermit, the mischievous ones, and Dolly and Millie and the twins, George and Art, not even their classmates could tell them apart. The state room was filled with goodwill and good cheer. The mouse children watched from the great, great chandelier. It was going quite well until George, with a whoop, slipped and landed a splash in the senator's soup. The president has a big job, you'll agree. Many places to go, many people to see. In the great Oval Office, he does all his thinking. And Woodrow, they say, is as smart as Abe Lincoln. The President Mouse has a deck on the shelf where he works with his helpers or just by himself. Our green constitution keeps the President busy. So many assignments, a mouse could get dizzy. The primary job of the President Mouse is working with Congress, the Senate, and House on making new laws for the good of the nation, health, peace, and justice for the whole population. The President is required to study each bill that Congress delivers from Capitol Hill. If he signs it, a bill becomes law. It's approved. If he gives it a veto, it's rejected, removed. Here's the Chief Executive, which means he's in charge, of government departments, the small and the large. Government departments include transportation, justice, and labor, and of course, education. He is also commander in chief, and that means the Army and Navy, Air Force, and Marines report to the president as boss, the big cheese. On this, every soldier and sailor agrees. The president regularly talks with and greets the leaders from foreign countries he meets. In this job, the president is our head of state when handling foreign affairs, small and great. But the president also gets time out to play. Every Easter, for instance, is egg rolling day. There are oranges, yellow eggs, blue eggs too. There are even some eggs colored red, white, and blue. Inside the White House, there's also more fun for Woodrow, his family, and most everyone. The East Room is used for artistic events like concerts and shows for mouse ladies and gents. One night, Millie dreamed that on this special day, she might, if she practiced, dance an East Room ballet. She'd be joined by the famous Marine Mouse Quartet for her flawless finale of Fine Parrots. 
the red room and green rooms are not side by side, but they're wonderful places for children to hide. When they play hide and seek and Woodrow is seeking, he finds them so fast, could it be that he's peeking? The blue room at Christmas is decked to the ceiling. The fire is roaring, the children all squealing. Excited that Christmas is once again here to share with our loved ones and those we hold dear. As he nodded to sleep, the good President Mouse was thankful for family and country and house. It's all so wonderful with his happy reflection that a fellow just might want to seek re-election. I hope that you all enjoyed this story as much as I did, and I'll post more stories later. Bye! Oh. <laughs>